Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for the final webinar in our series. Today, we're going to be talking about collaborating anywhere, anytime with Bluebeam Review iPad. My name is Amy, and I'm an account manager here at Bluebeam, and I also manage our training program where I work directly with our customers in developing custom training sessions. Today, I'm going to be joined by my colleague in account services, Rob Fujisaki, who will be driving the iPad app as we lead this webinar. So while anyone can use Review on a Windows-based tablet, in 2012, we came out with our first ever Review iPad app, available at the App Store for just $9.99. And as of May 21st, we're now on version 1.6. We release updates throughout the year. And once you purchase it, you are eligible for those updates. So you can check on your iPad um, to see if you're running the latest version, 1.6. So while it's not designed to be an exact replica of our desktop version, on Review iPad, you have the core review features, markup tools, tool chest, markup lists, and studio available at the swipe of a finger. With Review iPad, we bring the power of review to the job site, allowing you to collaborate and mark up from anywhere at any time. So today's training is designed for users who want to take the power of review into the field with the iPad app. As you might already know, Bluebeam Review is a smart, simple PDF solution that's designed to help you take your workflows digital. After today's training, you're, you should at least understand how to sync your files and get them onto the iPad, how to navigate around on the app, how to open files with file access, how to use our app's industry standard markup tools and the tool chest, and how to even track your markups on the iPad in the markups list. Finally, we'll talk about how you can connect from the field to the office, office and collaborate on projects using Studio on the iPad. While review is used by many people in many fields, for today's training, we are going to be assuming that you're working within an AEC industry workflow. But at the end, I will cover some additional options for more customized training. So let's just take a quick look at the agenda before we get started today. Uh, the content portion of today's webinar is going to last about 45 minutes. Um, we're going to get started um, taking a look at the iPad interface and navigating around on the app. We'll then talk about how to access and sync, get your files onto the iPad. We'll then cover um, using the markup tools on the app and talk about how to save and reuse those tools from our tool chest. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about how you can use the markup list for tracking those comments. And then we'll take you through a workflow example, collaborating with Bluebeam Studio, both sessions and projects. Then we'll cover a few additional training opportunities. And finally, we'll have um, about the last 10 minutes available for Q&A. Speaking of Q&A, um, I do have Brittany here. Uh, she's from product management and is an iPad whiz, and she's here to basically um, receive your questions uh, throughout the entire training. So if something's not clear to you, if you want more information on any of the features that we're covering, you can type them into um, the question panel in the chat window on GoToWebinar, and Brittany will be able to elaborate on that. So please don't hesitate to make good use of her. Also, just wanted to let you know we are going to be recording this webinar and we will have it on our website in about a week. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Review iPad in action. So um, to get started, um, let's take a look at the anatomy of the Review iPad app and talk about how to move around on it. Uh, Rob right now has the iPad open, which you'll see on your screen. Um, and let's take a look at um, these icons on this main menu at the top. You might be familiar with many of these if you've used Review on your desktop. Um, starting on the far left, we have the tab access, um, tr this upside down triangle. And if you select it, that's going to open up the left hand panel. And this is how you're going to get into um, your tool chest, the thumbnails tab, the bookmarks, and the search functionality. And we'll take a look at that in depth in just a moment. Um, so Rob can go ahead and close that panel by just clicking on that, um, that panel handle there. In landscape mode, you can just click on it and it will close the panel. Um, just to the right of tab access, we have your basic create new file icon, something you're probably familiar with already. 
Um, next to that, we have our File Access tab. And this is where, Rob clicks on that, it opens up in the left hand panel. First, this is where you're going to see all of the recently opened PDF files. You'll notice they're all going to be listed here. This is also where um, you can go ahead and create project folders and pin files. Um, so you'll notice just to the right of file access, this icon here, if Rob clicks on that, that's going to take us into edit mode. Um, and essentially, he can now go in here, and you'll see there's radio buttons um, next to each of these file names. So if you click on the radio button, that's going to actually select that file. So let's say Rob wanted to remove one or two files here that he wasn't going to need to look at. He can just select them and then click Remove, and that's going to remove those files from the recent. This is also where he can choose to pin a file, um, making it easier to access. So he can go ahead and select a file that he wants to pin by clicking on the radio button. Then he still clicks on Pin here at the bottom. And then he has a few choices here of where he wants to pin it. If he were to select all categories, that's going to pin it to all project folders that he might have set up. Um, in this case, um, he's not going to do that. If he were to select Pinned, Pinned is a folder that is set up on the app by default um, for you to pin files there. In this case, Rob wants to go ahead and create a new project folder. So he's just going to click on Create here at the bottom. And that's going to allow him to essentially set up a folder um, of his own naming. So maybe for a specific project, he wants to go ahead and create a folder. And then he can pin all of his files into that folder. So he just selects that. And now you'll notice in File Access at the very top, we have his project folder that he just created. So that's going to always keep his files that he needs to access on a regular basis at the very top of File Access, so it's easier to find. He can go ahead and hit the Edit icon again, and this is going to take him out of Edit Mode. And then he can just go ahead and close that panel down to make File Access go away. So just to the right of that icon is what you call, we call our Document Manager. So while File Access allows you to easily access specific PDF files quickly, what Document Manager does is it allows you to connect to either your local documents folder on your iPad, or it will allow you to connect to outside cloud-based file storage systems. So you can connect to the following services um, from the iPad app. They include Dropbox, Box, WebDAV, and our own studio project. And once you're connected to these accounts, you can then sync them down and begin working with those files. And we're going to take you through that process on Dropbox in just a minute so you can see what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and close that document manager. Um, the next icon here is called the Share As icon. And it's going to give you various options for opening files, emailing them, um, opening them in a specific program, flattening and opening, or saving as. And then finally, to the right of that, we have our studio icon to connect and start a new studio session or join an existing session or project for cloud-based document collaboration. And we'll be going over that in depth when we take you through our workflow example. Um, so finally, just over here on the right-hand side, um, you'll notice, um, you'll probably familiar with these um, previous and next view buttons. Um, so if Rob were to click on the previous view, um, that's going to essentially take him back um, to the view that he was just in. So just like when you're on a web browser and you can go forward and backward, um, it's the same thing here. And then the icon to the right of that is our markups toolbar. So if Rob clicks on that, all the markup tools are going to appear over here on the right-hand side. And then just to the right of that, um, we have some options for how you're going to view um, the pages. So the first option there is for one full page. And when you have that selected, when Rob goes to that document and he pinches in and out, it's going to zoom in and zoom out on that file. So the typical pinching movement that you use on an iPad is going to allow him to zoom in and zoom out. If Rob were to tap on the second option here um, for scrolling pages, when Rob's on a multi-page document, when, you're, when you have scrolling pages selected and you swipe, it's going to scroll through the pages uh, vertically, so going from one page to the next vertically. We also have a reader mode. The very final icon here um, looks like a book is the reader mode. So if you're used to reading ebooks, um, this way when Rob swipes, it's going to scroll through the pages 
horizontally, so similar to reading an ebook. So you can use it any way you like, depending on how you like to view multi-page documents. And then the very final icon here, the cogwheel, this is going to bring up the iPad app um, preferences. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some preferences you might want to set uh, later on. So before we move on, I just wanted to go over a few helpful navigation tips for moving around uh, within the files on the iPad. So Rob goes back over to tab access um, and um, opens up the left-hand panel. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, some basic document management on the iPad. So you, Rob's going to click on this thumbnails tab here, uh, the four little squares. Um, and Rob, if you open up that multi-page document, perfect. Um, so you can see here, just like in Review Desktop, um, the thumbnails tab is where you're going to do some document management. Um, so if Rob wanted to go in and select any of these pages to open, you can just click on tap on it and it's going to open up in the screen. You know which page is selected because it has a blue border around it. If Rob wants to insert a blank page, you can go up here to the top and click on this plus sign with the up arrow and that's going to insert a blank page before that selected page. And of course, likewise, if he wanted to insert one beneath it, um, he just selects the down arrow and the plus sign, and that's going to insert the blank page beneath it. So if you end up with a page um, that's rotated the wrong way and you need to rotate it, you can do that right here. All you need to do, and unfortunately you can't see Rob's fingers, but I'll walk you through it. Essentially he just presses down with two fingers on the thumbnail and then rotates the page. So you press down with two fingers and rotate it, and it's very simple to do, and it will actually rotate the page on the app. Of course, you can rotate it back if you want. Um, you can also just delete pages if you need to here, and you can delete multiple pages as well. To delete multiple pages, you want to click on this icon for multi-select, um, and this is going to allow you to select more than one page at once. So if Rob wants to delete these two blank pages, page two and four, he just selects them. You can see they're selected. They now have an orange border because it's multiple pages. And then you can click on this um, X button, delete button here, and that's going to go ahead and delete those pages. Finally, um, you can easily reorder your pages. All you need to do is tap, hold, and then move the page where you want it to be. Um, so if Rob wanted to go in here and move page three, maybe underneath page four, he taps and holds. It's selected. And now he can literally just move it downward. Um, and then it's going to reorder it. So now page three is now underneath page four. So very easy to do this basic document manipulation um, from the thumbnail tab. Um, so the next thing I wanted to show you is our bookmarks option. Rob's rotating pages like crazy here. <laughs> so Rob clicks on this bookmark over here. This is where if you have any bookmarks already set up in a file, they're going to display here. You can also create new ones right from the iPad. So Rob clicks on this plus sign with the bookmark. By default, it's going to set up the bookmark to have the title as the page number, but you can change that by just tapping and holding on that, and it will bring up a box for you to be able to change the title. Um, so you can set up all of your bookmarks here um, for easily being able to navigate uh, throughout the pages of a multi-page document. Um, finally, um, once Rob is finished setting up those bookmarks, um, wanted to show you our search functionality. Um, the search feature is going to be this uh, binoculars here. Um, and if Rob clicks on that, he can go ahead and search for any text within this PDF document. Um, you can go ahead and type it into the search field and then click on search. And it's going to um, search the document and then bring up a list of all instances of this particular word. And all instances are going to automatically be hyperlinked for you. And then Rob can just simply click on that hyperlink and take himself to that exact position of that word in that page. Um, so very simple to, to search and find all instances of a particular word or phrase. So um, one final thing um, just before we move on. Um, we've already shown you how you can pinch your fingers inward and outward to zoom in and out on a drawing. Um, you're probably already used to doing this on your iPad. I wanted to show you one other thing. Rob, if you get back into that um, document, the A201 file, um, you just have to uh, discard those changes, close out, close out of that panel. Um, another option for zooming in 
is Rob can actually double tap one finger to zoom in and then single tap two fingers to zoom out. So um, depending on how you want to work, you can either do tapping or, or pinching to be able to zoom in and out. Um, you can also pan around on the drawing by just placing your fingers where you want to pan to, pressing down, and dragging up into that area. You're probably all very familiar with this if you work on your iPad a lot. Um, so let's finally also just talk about selecting objects and bringing up the context menu. Um, so you'll notice there's a markup there um, over that classroom. To select an object, you just tap on it. Um, so you'll notice it's now selected um, which, with the orange control point. If you hold for two seconds, you tap on it and you hold for two seconds, it's going to bring up this context menu. So the context menu, you can think of it equivalent to right-clicking on a desktop. It's going to bring up another menu with some additional options. Um, so you can see now Rob has some additional options for what he wants to do with this markup. To deselect this object or menu, you just need to single tap somewhere else on the drawing, and it's going to be deselected. Great. So um, now that you're a little more familiar with our iPad app interface, let's take a look at how you can get your PDF files into review on your iPad. So as I mentioned before, Review iPad syncs with three popular web storage services, Dropbox, Box, WebDAV, along with our own studio projects. Or if you prefer, you can also transfer files via iTunes. Uh, for this webinar, Rob is going to show us how to set up your Dropbox accounts on the app. So he's already clicked on the Document Manager icon, and that's brought up the Document Manager box. Um, he's going to go ahead and click on, actually, you'll notice here, he already has a project set up here. He clicks on that. Um, Rob, can you go back there? on that previous screen. Um, this little icon here, it's called the Accounts icon with two people. You're going to click on that, um, and this is going to allow you to set up um, your new account. So he's going to go ahead and click Add here. And this is going to show you um, a list of services that you can set up on the iPad. You have to, of course, already have an account with these services. In this case, Rob has a Dropbox account, so he's going to select that. Um, and all you need to do is enter an account name. So this is just um, any name you want, really. This is just how it's going to show up on the iPad to reference your Dropbox account. Uh, and then you're going to have to enter your actual username for that service. So whatever your Dropbox username is, usually it's your email address. Um, you're going to go ahead and enter it into that field. And then all you've got to do is just uh, hit Add. And it's going to log you into Dropbox and allow you to log into your account. Um, so this is where you're going to just quickly put in your Dropbox password, uh, which Rob is doing right now, and then just go ahead and sign into your account. Um, once you've signed into your account, you're just going to have to hit a button that says Allow. It's going to ask you um, if you want to share all of your folders and documents uh, with review. So you just hit Allow there. And that's going to let the app have access to Dropbox account and all its files. So that's it. Um, now you'll see Rob has ABC project with the Dropbox icon set up um, already on his iPad so he can access all of his files uh, right there. So now that he's connected, let's go ahead and sync down some files. So he's going to get into that Dropbox account. You'll notice he has two folders here. Both of them have an icon with a file folder and a cloud. That cloud tells you that you have files in that folder that are still up in the cloud. You have not downloaded them to your iPad. If all of those files were already downloaded to this iPad, that cloud would disappear. Um, so he can go ahead and get into the folder that has his files that he needs. And all you got to do is select the radio button, that's the file he wants, and then go ahead and hit Sync. That's going to open up the Sync Manager, and you'll actually see the progress. Once you've got a check mark, you know uh, you've downloaded it. So now that he's got a file downloaded onto his iPad, um, let's get to work marking up this file. So um, let's go ahead. This is actually the same file we were just uh, just looking at. Um, and actually, Rob, do you want to delete those markups? Perfect. Um, so let's say Rob is out in the field um, doing a site walk, and he wants to make some markups and comments on the drawing. So he's going to click on this markup icon, which he already did. 
the markups toolbar will appear. And you're going to notice you're going to have to scroll to see all of the options. They won't all fit on here. So he scrolls down, and you'll see these are all of the different markup options that you have. Um, so if you use review on the desktop, you're probably very familiar with many of these. Um, so let's say Rob wants to zoom in on this drawing and um, draw attention to a curtain wall mullion over here, I believe it is, and um, to make a quick comment about it. Of course, you can use um, our cloud tool for that if you'd like to draw attention to it. And with the cloud tool, um, you have two different options of how you might want to draw a cloud. You can either just sort of draw a rectangle and, and drag it out. Um, so if he's doing something that's um, a square shape, he can do that. Um, or he can also just select that and then just tap multiple points. Um, so he can essentially create any shaped cloud um, that he wants to create uh, by just tapping points and then just closing it off. So let's say he wants to make his markup pop out visually a little more. He can change the properties by clicking on the cogwheel down here at the bottom. That's going to open up the toolbar for the visual properties. So this is where he can go ahead and add a background fill color to the cloud to make it stand out. And then he could go down to our opacity and take that down so he can see the underlying content a little closer. And then if he wants to um, get out of the properties, um, toolbar here, he can just go ahead and click on the markups icon again, and that's going to take him back to the markups toolbar. So if he wants to make a text comment about this area, he has a couple choices. He can use the text box, the call out tool, which is a text box to tap to an arrow, or we have the typewriter tool down here as well. Um, so he can go ahead and select whatever he wants to use and then um, make a quick uh, text comment about this curtain wall mullion. And then, of course, once he's done that, he can um, also change the visual properties of that callout, um, just like he did with the cloud tool as well. And again, anyone on the call here who's used review on the desktop, this is all probably very familiar to you. Just a slightly different way of accessing the tools, but it's the same features. You'll also notice he has a, um, if he gets back um, into the markup toolbar, a few other options for just drawing freehand comments. Uh, he can go ahead and click on uh, we have a pen tool and a highlighter tool, depending on what you want to use. He could um, select the pen tool and just uh, make some actual um, freehand comments or sketches or even use his stylus pen if he wants to. Um, you can also, to get out of that uh, pen functionality, just hit the escape key um, so it will stop making pen marks. And if Rob wanted to quickly undo a markup that he just made, you'll notice there's an undo redo button down here. So he could just click undo um, if he decides he doesn't actually want that, um, that markup there. He could also um, decide to just select an entire markup by tapping on it. Um, say he wants this cloud to disappear. And then just clicking the X button, and that's going to actually delete it. Um, I wanted to show you one more um, very useful markup tool before we move on, and that's the snapshot tool, which again, you might have used on Review Desktop. So that's the little camera icon down there. Um, snapshot is going to allow you to take a picture of an area of this drawing, and it will allow you to essentially copy it and paste it somewhere else, but enlarge in the size of it. Um, so if Rob wanted to make a bigger sketch of this women's restroom over here to make more detailed notes, he can click on the snapshot icon and then just drag a rectangle over the area of this woman's restroom. And once he's done that, um, he's just going to tap and hold on it, and that's going to bring up the context menu. And he's going to click on Take Snapshot. And that's going to essentially take a picture of that area. Then if he wanted to go back over to our Thumbnails tab that we were looking at a little earlier, um, get into the thumbnails, he can insert a blank page there. Um, so go ahead and insert a blank page underneath this drawing or above, either one. And then he can go and tap and hold on that page. So just click his, his cursor down on the black page, on the blank page, tap and hold it. It'll bring up the context menu, and then he can select paste. That's going to paste down that part that he just took a snapshot of. Then he can literally click on these control points and stretch it out. It keeps the aspect ratio constant, so it's going to be, um, it's not going to become blurry or distorted. That way, he can basically have a sketch here, and he can make some real detailed notes on this woman's restroom. 
So now that we've added a few markups and we've taken a snapshot, as a final step, we want to apply our markups. So you'll notice this document tab where the name of the file is located here. It's got a green check mark and an X. A Rob needs to tap on that check mark to apply these markups. It's going to say confirmation, save all changes. This is essentially the same as saving a file on the desktop. Um, or if you didn't want to keep them, you can also hit that X to discard them. But just to let you know, if you forget to do that and then you try to exit out of this file or open up something else, um, there's going to be a pop-up window that will appear asking you if you want to apply or discard the changes. You don't have to worry about accidentally forgetting to do that. It will remind you. Speaking of reminding, just a reminder, uh, I do have Brittany here um, seriously typing away, but she is available uh, to answer any questions. Um, I know we're going quite quickly to get through all this content. Um, if you need some more details, please feel free to type your question in. So if you've ever used review on a desktop, you know that the tool chest, which is over here on the left-hand panel, is your symbol library for easy reuse and sharing of your commonly used markups. You're going to find the same feature on the review iPad app. So you can see Rob's already accessed uh, the tool chest and opened it up over here. You're going to notice at the top we have the My Tools tool chest. So this is where you can save your own custom markups to your app, so your version of this app. So to get a markup into My Tools, um, Rob, can you zoom in on this markup that you placed earlier? All you're going to need to do, let's say he wants to get that uh, cloud in there. He's just going to tap down and hold. So again, tap and hold to bring up the context menu. Add to My Tools. And that's going to place that markup into the tool, My Tools. It goes in by default in what's called properties mode. Um, so that means it retains the same visual properties, but if Rob selects it and then places it back onto the drawing, it's going to allow him to draw it in a new shape. Um, so sometimes you want to have the same shape, sometimes you want to be able to draw a new shape. It keeps the properties the same, but allows you to redraw it. If he taps and holds on this, he can switch it over to drawing mode. So if he selects drawing mode, that's going to essentially save an exact copy of that original markup he put in there. So if he selects it, he can place it back onto the drawing if you need to reuse the same markup over and over again. Um, so if you're used to using um, Review's desktop tool chest, you probably have quite a few custom tool sets already set up in your tool chest. You can import your custom tool sets onto the Review iPad app. So if Rob clicks on this cog wheel, this is going to take you into the Manage Toolsets box. And you'll see he already has a number of custom tool sets already imported. If he selects them here, he can basically turn them on and off. So let's say he wants to turn Architect and Electrical on. He can select them and go ahead and X out of this, and you'll notice they're now appearing. And um, just as a side note, you know, best practices that we always talk about are color coding your custom tool sets, either by discipline or by the type of markup. So you have a visual reference for different disciplines on the actual drawing. So how do you actually import your tool sets onto the iPad app? Let's talk about that. Um, so let's say um, Rob was on his desktop, and he created a custom tool set. Um, and he went ahead and exported it. You can export it as a BXF file. And then he can either upload that BXF file to his Dropbox account, or he can quite simply just email it to himself as an attachment. And that's what he did. He set it up and he sent himself an email and attached um, a new tool set. So you'll notice um, he got into his email program, and here's the new tool set, a mechanical one. All you need to do is tap and hold on that, and then it gives you an option to open it in a certain program. You want to just say, open it in Bluebeam Review. And that's literally all you need to do. It's automatically going to import that tool set into your tool chest. So now you'll notice Rob has his mechanical tool set um, right there. So if he needed to make a quick note um, that was referencing a, a mechanical issue that he saw, he can go ahead and select that markup tool um, and place it down. And as a side note, the advantage of importing your custom tool set that you set up in Review Desktop is you're able to attach a subject line into those markup tools. Um, which will make it much easier when you're sorting those in the markups list. One final note on the tool chest. Um, if Rob clicks on this icon here, the circle, it's going to switch it into details mode. And details mode is going to show you um, the markup and then also the subject line and any sort of comments attached. 
So you're able to toggle back and forth between details mode and uh, symbol mode, symbol view, depending on, on how you want to work. So now that we've placed the markups onto the drawing, um, and we've talked a little bit about um, using uh, the tool set and tool chest, we can now talk about sorting and tracking those comments in the markups list. So Rob can go ahead and close this panel with the tool chest and open up the markups list, which is in the bottom panel, just like in desktop review. Um, so you'll notice um, in the markups list, um, we have a record of every single markup that he placed onto the drawing. And he can literally, as he has it selected, it's going to select the actual markup on the drawing itself. Um, so you can literally scroll through there and see a record of every single comment that was placed on the drawing. Um, you'll also notice that he can sort by each of these column headers. So right now, um, he has it sorted by the subject line. So this is why it makes a lot of sense to have these preset by discipline. Um, but if you don't actually have it set up, you can actually change the subject line on the fly right here. If he just taps and holds on this cloud, for instance, in the subject line, it's going to allow him to change that to something that's more relevant for this particular markup. So you can actually go in and just change them right from the markups list. Um, also, if you have a markup that has any sort of text attached to it, like this, um, this comment here, ABC comment, any sort of um, call out or text box, it's going to put that, that text in the comments field. You could also add text right here. Um, so if he needed to add a particular comment, text comment, or change what's there, he could actually change it right there in the markups list. It is essentially um, editing the actual markup itself. You can do it on the visual markup or on the markup list. So once he's updated any subject lines or added any comments that he needs to, again, he can sort by each of the different um, column headers. You can also click on this cog wheel over here on the right-hand side. And this is going to manage what columns are showing in the markup list. Um, so right now, you'll see there's actually a lot more columns here that he has turned off. Um, and on the Review iPad app, uh, you can't actually set up a custom column, but, you do, but it does support existing custom columns that are already saved into a document. Um, so for instance, this responsibility column is a custom column that Rob set up, and he saved into this PDF file. Um, and if it, you close out of this, Rob, um, you can show how you can actually set a responsibility for each of these outstanding items that need to be addressed. Um, so he already set up a few different people that potentially would have to deal with it. And he can just select it right here in the markups list column, and it will open up and allow him to select one of these people that has, has to deal with that. Um, all stuff that you're probably familiar with if you've used this in Review Desktop. Also, we have a status column um, for doing some basic tracking of statuses of issues. Um, so you can um, click on the status column here, and then set a status to either accepted, rejected, completed. So Rob could, if he needs to reject a few items, he could go ahead and do that um, right here from the iPad app. Um, so you have the ability to do all of that right on the iPad. Uh, one final thing I wanted to show you in the markups list is we do have that filter option. So you can basically show only a certain subset of the markups based on um, certain criteria. So if you click on the filter icon here, it's going to allow you to set up a filter. Um, in this case, let's say Rob only wants to see the markups that have a status set to rejected, because he knows he needs to send those off to someone to deal with. So he just needs to select status and then select rejected. Um, and it's going to basically get rid of all of those other markups um, that don't fit into that filter. So now we're just looking at those two um, items in the markups list that had rejected statuses. Of course. Once you're done with that, if you want to clear out your filter and show everything again, you're just going to click on the filter with the X on it. And that's going to clear out all of that out. So now that um, Rob has actually made some changes to the markups from the markups list, he just needs to, again, hit that Apply Markups checkbox in the Document tab. And that's going to basically save all of that um, on the iPad. So just to complete this entire process, Rob synced down his file, he marked it up, he created some custom markup tools, and he tracked some of those comments. Now he wants to sync this file back up to his Dropbox account so he can access it from the office. Um, so in this case, let's close out of this markup list. He doesn't actually have to go back 
to uh, the document manager for this, you can do this all from file access. So if you click on the file access tab, you're going to notice we have not only the recent files and all the files we pinned, you now see there's a pending upload and this Dropbox icon. So the iPad app basically knows, hey, uh, you downloaded this file, you may change it, but you haven't uploaded it again. So here's an opportunity to do it. So he can just click on this sync icon, and that's going to open up the sync manager. And essentially, that's going to upload that file back up to his Dropbox account with his changes. And he's done it. And that's really all there is to it on the iPad app. So while syncing files with Dropbox or Box is one way to manage your files on the app, the ideal way, we think, for connecting your office to the field is through Studio, um, which is available both on Desktop Review, Review iPad, and our free PDF viewer called View. So for the final part of today's webinar, Rob and I are going to take you through a punch workflow example showing how you can collaborate using Studio sessions and projects on the iPad. So let's actually go back over to my computer and talk a little bit about um, Studio. If you're not familiar with it, Studio is our collaboration tool that is made up of two parts. Studio Sessions, our document-based collaboration tool, and Studio Projects, which is our lightweight but powerful document management system for storing all of your project files in the cloud for easy access and sharing with your partners. And get this, every user who has a copy of Review Desktop gets free unlimited storage space in Studio Projects. So let's now take a look at how Rob and I can collaborate from office to the field easily with Studio Sessions. So let's say Rob is out of the job site. It's just finished construction, and they're now getting started with the punch process. I'm a project engineer. I'm in the main office, and I've set up some sketches of various rooms that I need him to punch on the iPad. I can go ahead and uh, make use of um, Studio, and I'm just going to go ahead and open up my Studio icon here. And um, I can go ahead and start a new session and upload my files. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a new session here and upload my files and invite Rob into it. So I can just name the Studio session. I'm going to go ahead and choose the file. Um, I can also set permissions here of what I want Rob to be able to do with that file. Um, in this case, I only really need to upload one file, um, but I can actually upload up to 100 files. And I can invite up to 100, 500 excuse me, different um, partners that I want to collaborate with. In this case, one file and one partner. Um, so now that I've actually done that, um, I can go ahead and um, actually be able to collaborate in real time with Rob. So you'll notice I'm in here, and Rob's in here, and here's our file. Um, so let's actually now go ahead and switch over and take a look at Rob's iPad. Um, so what you'll see on Rob's iPad here is I've already sent him over a set of custom um, punch keys, a punch key tool set that I want him to use for this process. So you'll notice he already has that open over here, and we have each of these punch tool keys. It has preset a subject line that matches um, the discipline of what's wrong, and it also has a detailed comment attached to it saying exactly what needs to be fixed. Um, so Rob, all he has to do really is just select the actual punch key that's applicable for any sort of problem or deficiency that he sees in this conference room, um, select it, and then go ahead and place it down onto the drawing on the iPad, like he just did. Very easy. Um, but let's say uh, Rob sees a problem in the room that really the punch key doesn't adequately describe. He can make use of the camera built-in, the camera icon here. He can select that, and it just uses iPad's built-in camera functionality. And he can literally take a snapshot. In this case, maybe there's a problem with this electrical faceplate and go ahead and use that photo, place it right down onto the drawing, and uh, make any sort of um, text comments that he wants to make describing this particular problem. Super useful and handy to be able to have that camera to quickly take photographs um, for the punch process, or really any sort of review process on site. 
Also, and you're, you know, of course you can make use of any of these markup tools that we talked about before. Another one that's new, um, only found on the iPad, not on Review Desktop, is this little audio microphone icon. If you're someone who likes taking audio notes, describing problems, you could click on that and do a quick recording of anything that you see um, and literally place that recording right down onto the PDF. Um, so he can very easily document all the deficiencies that he sees um, in this room very quickly. So meanwhile, um, back at the office, um, I'm in my nice air conditioning high-rise office building, and I'm <laughs> sitting in here in real time watching Rob as he uh, marks up this room. And you can literally, if you click on his name and you see these two little footprints here, you can follow an attendee in studio. Um, so right now, um, you'll see as that uh, the, the screen moves here, that's actually Rob doing that. That's not me. I'm not controlling the screen. So it's almost as if you're sitting over his shoulder at the job site and watching in real time as he's actually marking up this drawing. Uh, you even have a chat room. Uh, if you want to basically chat back and forth um, and be able to do that with any of the attendees in the session. And of course, you have this record here. Um, so a record showing every time someone enters the session, leaves the session, every markup that's placed onto the drawing, also any sort of um, chat dialogue that's going on. And any time you want, you can click to create a report that you can send off to someone, um, not only with the document, the updated document with all the markups, but also a report of everything that went on. And right now, we're doing this session in real time. Of course, you could also do a studio session where people come in on their own time and make the markups. And one final thing I wanted to point out about studio sessions is very important is a layer of security that we have that's unique to studio sessions. Um, so let's say I'm actually going to stop following Rob here, and I need to quickly make a, a markup on this drawing about this electrical room. Um, check fireproofing here. Um, so I just made a quick mark on here. Um, I wanted to point out in the markup list in Studio, if I open that up, you'll notice for all of these markups that Rob actually placed onto this drawing, for instance, um, these, uh, these um, punch keys that he put on here, there is a padlock under the lock column, basically showing that this is locked to me, not to Rob, but to me. So it's grayed out. I cannot change it. I cannot delete it. Um, but if I were to go in here and I would just take my markup that I placed on here, I can do whatever I want to it. I can delete things. I can change things. I can edit it because I made that markup. So within studio sessions, only the markups that you place can be changed by you. Everything else is completely locked down. Um, we added this security so you can basically rest assured that you've got a, a rock solid record of who said what and when they said it. No one can go in with any funny business and changing anything. So if any questions or problems arise in the future, um, you know that this is completely secure. So now in this example of this workflow, using studio sessions on an iPad, of course it does require that Rob has Wi-Fi in the field. And we all know that isn't always the case. So what do you do if you have no internet access? Um, I want to show you one quick final workflow um, using studio projects offline mode to essentially do the same thing if you have no internet access in the field. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this studio session that I was just in, and I'm going to go into a studio project. Um, so I actually already set this up. Under studio, you have your sessions at the top and your projects. I'm going to go ahead and enter this project that I set up beforehand. And if you remember, I mentioned with Studio projects, it's not just PDF files, but all of your project files, Excel spreadsheets, Word docs, image files. You can upload everything. So literally, I took an entire project folder and I uploaded it, keeping the same file structure. Very easy to do. You can also go in here in Studio Projects um, and set up the project settings. And this is where I'm going to invite people to share these files. In this case, I did invite Rob. You can also go in here and add pretty detailed permissions about what you want each individual person to be able to do with these files. Um, so I've already invited Rob um, to be able to share and access these files. Um, so let's actually now switch back over to the iPad um, and take a look at what Rob's up to. So let's say he's out of the job site. 
Right now he's in this trailer um, that does actually have Wi-Fi. And while he's there, he's going to go ahead and connect to this studio project. So he clicked on the studio icon. He's got sessions here. That's what we were just in. But now he's going to click on the tab for projects. Um, and he's going to go ahead and um, log in to this project that I just invited him to, the Valley College project. Um, and he's going to go ahead and open that up. And he's going to just download those files that he knows he's going to need to punch um, today um, for the morning hours. Um, so he's going to go ahead and get into that and just go ahead and download um, one or two files that he's going to need. Um, so he can just select the radio buttons and then go ahead and click Sync. And that's going to download those files from the project in the cloud. And that's what it's doing taking just a quick moment to do that. And you can see it's pending download, and it's going to show a quick check mark um, once those files are downloaded. And then he can go ahead and just open up one of these files that he's going to need in the field. Um, so now that he has that file opened, uh, Rob, you can actually um, click this, close this panel out. One thing I wanted to point out to you um, is it's got this padlock here. So essentially this right now, it downloads as a read-only file. So he cannot edit this file. Um, so if you click on that markup toolbar up here, you'll notice um, that actually all of those markup icons are actually grayed out. So he cannot mark up the document. So he needs to check it out while he still has Wi-Fi. So tap and hold on that document manager. If you tap and hold on it, it's going to bring up the option to check out that file. Um, so you can just select Check Out, and that's going to check it out from the project. So no one else who has access to that project will be able to edit that file. So it gives you that document control. So you know no one's going to be overwriting anything. So now that he's done that, Rob can just go out to the field and do whatever he needs to do to this document, um, make some markups if he's doing the punch process, go ahead and start, and start punching the room. And right now, we're assuming he's actually offline. Just wanted to point that out to you. Um, so we've made a quick markup on the document. Of course, he still needs to hit Apply, um, just like before, to actually save this markup onto the document. Um, and once he's done that, let's say fast forward a couple hours, he's finished making all of his changes. He goes back into the office and gets back on Wi-Fi. Now all he has to do as a final step is go ahead and tap and hold again and check that document back in. Um, so a very simple check in and check out process. Um, this time when he taps and holds, it's going to allow him to check in. Um, and at this point, he can add a quick comment to this comment box, just referencing what he actually did to that document. And that's going to be saved onto the project. So when you check it back in, you're also syncing it. You're also uploading it back up um, to the project on the cloud. So it goes back to being um, a read-only file. Um, and now it's uploaded back to the project, so everyone else on his team will be able to see all of the markups and changes that he's made. So really, that's all there is to it, being able to use studio projects in the field even when you don't have internet access. So that completes the content portion of our agenda today. Uh, and before we get into any questions, I wanted to talk about just a few additional opportunities for learning if you're hungry for more about the iPad. Let me actually switch back over here. Um, we do have um, coming up, uh, very coming up very soon, our Extreme Conference on August, that's Friday, August the 2nd. Um, and we do have a mobility session in that, um, on that day, that conference. So it's basically an entire day of sessions, trainings. We have sessions with some big customers talking about how they use Bluebeam. Um, a great party after everything. It's a wonderful day of learning and fun. And just also to let you know, there will be a few new features announced at the Extreme Conference that's going to make it even easier to connect from the field. So definitely something to check out. And if you're interested in doing it, I would suggest signing up really soon because we're getting close to the max amount of people that we can accommodate. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is um, Bluebeam University. Um, on our website. Um, this is where actually we have all of our training videos, um, over 100 training videos. If you're interested in learning more about Studio, um, this is the place to come to. Specific to the iPad, however, you want to click on Support 
from our main menu, and then you want to go down and click on Review iPad Resources. And this is going to take you to our Review iPad page. And this is where we have all of our iPad videos. We've got a bunch of training videos and tutorials, tips and trips, FAQs. This is what's going to be updated regularly with new resources specific to the iPad. Finally, I um, wanted to point out we do have some additional paid training options. Um, so we've got um, on-site training where we come to you, have an entire day of customized training. We also have uh, web-based group training. So we have webinars for groups or one-on-one. -on -one. And all of our trainings are very customized. So we talk to you in advance about exactly what you're doing and basically um, create a training where we're going to show you how to use reviews specifically for your workload. So we've done this for many different groups. Um, if you want more information on that, you can just send an email to training at bluebeam.com. So I wanted to just, um, I'm just looking at, we've gotten quite a few questions coming in for the webinar. Um, I'm just looking at a few of them that look like they might be relevant um, for everyone to just talk a little bit about. Um, so the first one, um, someone's asking, do my hyperlinks work on the iPad? And let's actually um, switch over to Rob. Rob, I think you have a, a document with hyperlinks, right? I'm hoping. <laughs> um, so yes, the answer is yes. Your hyperlinks do work on the iPad. Um, so Rob's going to find a document that he knows has some on there. Um, just to let you know, you can't set up new hyperlinks on the iPad app. Um, but if you have any existing hyperlinks, they are definitely going to work. Um, so Rob, if you want to zoom in here and um, show me where that hyperlink is, and I can go ahead and click on that. Um, so, oh yes, so this um, tag here, to go into this elevated view, you'll notice there's a dotted line around it showing you that it's a hyperlink. I'll show you how to set that up. But Rob clicks on that, and it actually is taking him directly to an actual detailed view. Um, so you can actually hyperlink not just to a whole page, but you can take a snapshot view of a portion of a page and hyperlink directly there, and it will work on the iPad. Um, let me actually switch back over to my screen, and I'll show you just a few um, best practices for setting up those hyperlinks, um, specifically for the iPad. There's a few things that you need to know about that. Um, and let me open up, I believe it's this document here. So he, yeah, so this was the document that he hyperlinked. Um, and let me open up the other one. So um, when you set up that hyperlink, uh, you're going to go ahead and close that. go to markup and then hyperlink, and this is going to allow you to set it up. I'm just going to draw a line over this. Um, in this case, I'm going to take it to a snapshot view, and I'm going to say get rectangle, and I'm going to open up this other page and literally draw a rectangle around this elevated west elevation, because um, that's where I want the hyperlink to go. Um, two things I wanted to point out about this um, is in the properties over here, let me go back here and select this markup. So I go into my links tab. I can select this markup and go back into, this is the properties of this link. Um, on the iPad, you can't hover over it to actually see that it's a, a hyperlink. So you need to somehow have a visual reference. So what I would suggest doing is, number one, checking visible. And number two, I would make this either a solid or a dashed line. So it's going to be um, a dashed square all around that. So someone on an iPad actually knows it's a hyperlink. Otherwise, they wouldn't know that it's linked. Um, one other thing, so that you would do that first of all, um, is you want to also make sure that you have this checkbox checked. So you're going to use relative path um, to make sure that that's going to work on the iPad. So that's really the only two tips um, to make sure that you do when you set up that hyperlink to work on the iPad. Uh, let's see. So we have a few more minutes. Um, we have another question. Um, can you set up a custom tool set on the iPad? Uh, the answer is yes, and actually let me switch back over to Rob. So we showed you how to import a custom tool set by, in this case, emailing it to yourself, but you can actually set up a custom tool set directly from the iPad. So Rob, if you want to open up your tool chest again, then, um, yeah, so we're in the tool chest. So you're going to click on this cog wheel to open up uh, the manage tool, uh, tool sets here. And then you just want to click on that plus sign. And that's going to allow you to set up a new custom tool set. So you can name it whatever you want. And it's going to go ahead and display that tool set. 
Um, great. So, okay, there we go. So now we've got the tool set. Now how do you get your tools in there? Um, what you need to first do is make sure the tool that you want to put in there, the markup, is in my tools. Let's say this particular cloud here, he wants to move it down to his new custom tool set. All you do is tap and hold, and then select copy. So essentially you're going to copy and paste it. And then, once you've copied it, go down to your new tool set, tap and hold, and select paste. And that's going to um, copy and paste any of your markup tools into your custom tool set that you want to set up. So that's how you would go ahead and do that. Uh, one final question um, that I wanted to look at is um, someone's asking, how do I speed up the loading of documents on the iPad? Um, so we do have a few um, tips for doing that in the preferences. You know, when you're dealing with very large PDF files on an iPad, um, this is the preferences. This is that, that cog wheel that we showed you before. Rob, if you want to click on that and just show them what that looks like. And then there is a place on the, um, on the, it will be under, I believe, rendering. Um, let me take you into actually, yes, it's under rendering on the um, preferences. And let me take you back to our website here. Um, this is the support page for the iPad. Going down to the bottom, um, there is a FAQ item about this. And this will take you through all of the preferences that you're going to want to set. Um, for dealing with very large PDF files to speed up the rendering of those. So there's some things with safe rendering, incremental rendering. Um, so you can take yourself through this um, quick FAQ item, and it's going to explain to you what you want to set um, just to optimize the rendering on the iPad app. Um, I, I hear Brittany still typing. If for some reason you had a question that was asked that didn't get addressed during the webinar, um, we will definitely um, follow up with you. Um, within the next 24 hours with answers to your, your questions. Or if any questions come up for you during the day today, um, you're always um, free to send us a quick email, training at bluebeam.com, um, for us to go ahead and address those. Um, so that pretty much comes to um, the end of our content. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for uh, taking time out of their day um, to join us. and. Um, Please attend the Extreme Conference, visit our Bluebeam University, and email us if you have any further questions. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.